Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel in this video today I'm back again with another reaction to a German comedian and his name is Vince Ebert So I've done a reaction to Michael Mittermeier and I've also done a reaction to political comedy satire And I've been kind of getting into the German sense of humour So in this video today we're checking out a video titled German humour meets American mentality So let's get right into it for today and let's react to it for the first time Let's go my friends oh, We Germans are fascinated by stupid rules aren't we? In our train stations, innocent smokers are forced to stand in small yellow squares painted on the floor <laughs> in order to keep the non-smokers away from the poison. <laughs> That's about as intelligent as dividing a swimming pool into a peeing and a non-peeing section. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. No, I, I really love America because you're such a proud nation. Huh? In the US, you can keep a suicidal person off from jumping just by telling him, Sir, you can be proud to be American. If you did this to a German, he would jump before you can finish the sentence. <laughs> In Britain, I we can really relate. Love America, the American way, always asking, How are you? I mean, they don't care, but they do ask. <laughs> and the answer is always, Thank you, I'm fine, I'm great. So we, we kind of do that as well. So we definitely do that over here. So I'm kind of excited to see, I'm curious to see what he's going to say for the German people. Germany, uh, how are you, is not a common greeting phrase. It's a specific medical question. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> I have problems with my left kidney. My back hurts. I have sore throat. Pretty sure it's cancer. <laughs> the small talk is not our thing in Germany. We meet someone from America at a dinner party, and after five minutes we ask him, what the hell were you thinking when you killed all these Native Americans? Oh. That's our idea of a relaxed dinner conversation. <laughs> now we always wanted to, to get to the bottom of things. And maybe that's the reason why we have so many excellent scientists. 100 years ago, German physicists figured out that light is something in between a particle and a wave. That's quite interesting. Who gives the shit, Americans say? We just want to light up our rooms. <laughs> Such an approach is way too superficial for us, because we wanted to know exactly what light is. Therefore, the German Max Planck developed quantum physics, whereas the American Thomas Edison only invented the light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, without this invention, mm. we would still be sitting around a candle watching Netflix. <laughs> German mentality is deeply shaped by the spirit of Goethe's Faust. The desire to understand whatever holds the world together in its innermost faults. And I felt this desire too. When I was 10, I took my canary in its cage outside during a thunderstorm just oh. to check if Faraday was right. <laughs> this is not going to go well. And he was. Uh, <laughs> the bird wasn't struck by lightning, it died of a heart attack. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> An American friend of mine said, yeah, I know a lot of our people don't know anything about evolution. And maybe it's be because of our bad education system in America. Yours in Germany is much better. And I don't think it's true. I think we just have a different approach. Uh, in America, they say we go to school. In Germany, we say we go into school. So we Germans... I, gu I guess we go into school. We go to school. I guess that one kind of makes more sense because you're going into school, but I uh, like we go to school. Go you to know? school. In Germany, we say we go into school. So we Germans enter our school buildings, Americans just hang out in front of them. And, they <laughs> and don't get me wrong, also in Germany, there's a big lack of scientific knowledge. 45% of all German high school students believe that Voltaire invented the battery. I have no idea who invented the battery, to I be fair. I want to spend a year as an ampere in France. <laughs> <laughs> we Germans are afraid of everything. Of stem cells, nuclear power, fracking, genetic engineering, you name it. 
If the Germans had ruled the world a million years ago, our health and safety regulations would have prevented the discovery of fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. We are so full of fear. Before we go on holiday, almost every German takes out a Reiserücktrittsversicherung. Hmm? The most important insurance in Germany, a travel cancellation insurance. Almost every German has it. Oh, we book an adventure trip to the cannibals in South America, but only with a Reiserücktrittsversicherung. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be way too risky. One of the first three words German babies learn. Mom, Dad, Reiserücktrittsversicherung. <laughs> of course not. Mom and Dad come way later. <laughs> oh, it is the guest sponsor the fourth insurance. word is Fahrvergnügen, joy of driving. And this is very interesting, I think. Driving our cars is probably the only activity we Germans enjoy danger. When an American has a death wish, he strangles a bull's testicles, sits on its back, and tries to ride it for as long as possible. <laughs> we Germans yeah. invented the Autobahn instead. <laughs> Cars are... Yeah, no speed limit on the Autobahn. That's crazy. That, that's, I think they're the only country that does that. Seriously, it's crazy here. Our holy cows. Because it's our constitutional right to go on a family trip in a Volkswagen with the speed of a cruise missile. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit of a cliche, I know. Not every German is into cars. Uh, last year I flew into New York at, and at the border control, the officer asked me, So, you are German, what's your favorite car? And I said, sorry, officer, I don't care much for cars. And all of a sudden, he looked at me very suspiciously. <laughs> you don't have a favorite car, so you can't be German. Sorry, sir, not every German. Put your hand where I can see them. <laughs> Border security is kind of like that. Sometimes. Actually, it was a very relaxed routine check, about five hours. And uh, <laughs> forget what you heard about waterboarding. It's actually not that bad. <laughs> Porsche, a Porsche. What model? 911. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, my first time ever seeing Vince Ebert. I like that. I like that a lot. That video is absolutely hilarious, man. The reference he was, he was making about the smoker circle. And I really like the security, the border security in the airport. That was probably my favorite bit of the whole, the whole stand up comedy routine. And obviously about the science, Thomas Edison. Just a perfect stand-up routine. You had me laughing all the way through. And yeah, we had some German comedians kind of get me into finding more of them. I really like this. I, I don't know who I'm going to react to next. But I've definitely do some more reactions to German stand-up, German political com commentary, comedy. Just just a bunch of different stuff. So if you guys want more reaction videos like this, drop a like on the video, subscribe. But this guy, absolutely hilarious. I really did enjoy that.